So we're here at IBF Scam 2019, we're at the Sci-Fi Fair, and we've got an amazing project called Textile. We've got Andrea and we've got Carson over here. So can you introduce yourselves and uh, tell us a little bit more about what you're working on? Yeah, so I'm Andrew, this is Carson. Uh, we're two-sixths of the team at Textile. Uh, we build tools to help other developers use Textile in consumer applications primarily. Our focus is to help uh, help come up with new models for storing personal data on the decentralized web, giving users ownership over their data. Right now, we're really just trying to make it easier for other developers that believe in that to use the tools that we're creating. Yeah. So today, we brought two demonstrations. Yeah. We brought two demos to play with. Uh, one is called Textile Photos, so it's a decentralized photo sharing application. Uh, it's for photo sharing and uh, storage, so you can do long-term storage of photos. We have this shared group that people are coming up with their mobile app, taking photos. They're Just getting posting them. This is basically yeah. like a very uh, you know common place pattern in the web, which is a feed of multimedia. Exactly. And That's you're it. decentralizing that feed. Yep, right? exactly. yep. That's what text on Yep, and it's very loose identities that people can have, and they can just be playful in there. Yeah. The other one is a pure game. So we we built a literally a game of tag. Yeah. So one person is it. Everybody else is just trying to stay away from the person that's it. Uh, where the person that's it is cryptographically, they are capable of handing that over to other people, and everybody yeah. knows it. They can trust it. So it's using IPFS and libp 2 p and uh, and pure identity to do a verification and have rules in a game and it plays over a decentralized network, which is really cool. So there's a bunch of people downloading that app, and then there's one person that's it right now. Running around. Dubby, that person Dubby right was now? it forever, but I think he's it. Yeah, he's oh, watch out. Right. Yeah. All right, watch out. And what would Ollie do to attack me? Right, so, okay, so in the app, let's see here. Uh, so in the app, I'll show you really quick. The, uh, it's just like a, it's like a really lo-fi app. This is how I'd invite you to the game. Okay. Uh, but what hers is gonna look like is it'll be all red. And if somebody, if she shows that to somebody, they just scan it and it hands it over through the network. It hands it over to them, okay. and their app turns red. It's really lo-fi. No, that's that's pretty yeah. cool because what you're doing is like really disseminating information uh, to a bunch of peers that have joined a group that have broke, that have joined a game that are part of a private group in one way, and you're doing this in a decentralized fashion, right? And there's like some algorithm that is rotating across those across those peers as well and selecting. <laughs> yeah, so you nailed it. So we used this actually to teach a workshop earlier, yeah. which is showing how you could have shared databases, you could have these identities, yeah. you could have rule systems, verification and validation that people are playing by those rules, and all that's baked into a simple game attack. So it's and interesting. You can it's it's yeah. a simple use case, it's fun, but it's like a all bunch of blocks. components, yeah. yeah, building blocks working together to build yeah. the logic behind this, yeah. a set of rules and collaboration, right? So tell us a little bit more about how uh, the pictures here and the photos are being stored in IPFS and how this feed is updating in real time. Yeah, so we, well, okay, so we have a decentralized database called yeah. Threads. It's, a, yes. it's in the decentralized world, a database is always a bit different than a database, but so you can yeah. think of it that way. Yeah. Uh, and so everybody that's part of this group is joining that shared database. And when okay. people post to it, yeah. that's disseminated over peer to be uh, P2P, plus we have uh, sort of these gateway servers that do routing for these messages. And so you'll see it's a, an eventually consistent database. Right. So people will post and then some time yeah. will come and there you go, you get yeah, a few so people. Yeah, so here's yeah. just, just a picture of us. Yeah, <laughs> Conducted this interview oh, no. and then you've got Zago there, there who's the right cameraman. Right. <laughs> so all that so data is a, a combination of sort of lightweight schema structures, yeah. I, IPLD, right. and IPFS. So how did right now there was a piece of multimedia content that was yes. uploaded to IPFS and how did that arrive here? Are you using pops up? Are you using how are you disseminating that information in real time? How's that update arriving at a different node? Yeah, so in this case, um, I actually it's my account and I've got my account logged in on the phone here right. and I've used that same account to log in on my desktop right here. Right. And so these two accounts are synced. And they're actually directly dialing each other over lib P2P. Okay. And this, my phone is telling my desktop, hey, there's a bunch of updates, so I think you should grab them. Right. Here are their content addresses. Right. And then the desktop is going, thank you very much, I'll go grab those and download them. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're, they are for so display. So your phone so it's is direct connected directly to this other node running here over a, over a lib P2P connection. 
Exactly. Yeah. Nice. In this case, over uh, yeah, Wi-Fi. Yeah. Although I am plugged in, but that's just for charging. Yeah. So we just spoke a few minutes ago with the BLE guys. Yeah, we're very excited about that. <laughs> exactly. So I'm loving to see like these kind of like cross collaboration opportunities emerging because. Uh, this could be, you just said, that this happened over Wi-Fi, which means that, you know, you're depending on some kind of connectivity, but we're really just three meters away from each other, right? So how can we make together this happen over an offline first transport, which is, you know, one of the features that libby 2 be really gives you, that transport transparency and that switching between offline and, 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 and online mode. It's definitely something that we need to work on because it's still not there, uh, especially the seamless switching. So, what are your plans to like make the textile work in an offline fashion uh, when possible? Of course. Yeah. Well, so a part of that, uh, a part of that is the way that the clients are actually treating the data structures. Right. And so, or, I said one of the first things with a decentralized data store or database, yeah. a lot of times it's all peers are trying to maintain that full database. So we're coming up with different uh, protocols in our database so that peers can have sort of lightweight capabilities to listen to it. And that, that opens up opens up the opportunity to do um, Bluetooth handoffs a lot faster. Of course. So you could do things like here, I'm gonna send you one block and right. then you're gonna have it and not worry about always having to try to maintain the whole thing. The whole state. So you do it like some kind of yeah. signaling. Exactly. Maybe, you know, content is loaded when the user actually wants to load it. Exactly. So you're not like sending a whole bunch of content straight away without knowing if there is interest in it. Exactly. So the next right. version of our threads is coming out where we rethought yeah. a lot of that stuff. Nice. What does it do? Can uh, you tell us? <laughs> well, so um, it's, uh, we're in the sort of like planning and community feedback stage right now for Threads version 2. So we're actually talking to a lot of folks That's great. here. How can people participate in that in that feedback process? Uh, probably the easiest way is to reach out on our GitHub, uh, github.com slash textile.io. Uh, we've got a bunch of open tickets where, with calls for uh, use cases and the feedback. textile team is pretty accessible as well. Yeah, I was going to say, so we, we, have, we have a couple, I think we have three tickets open related to version two that are scoping out different pieces of that. People are giving feedback about uh, the types of threads that they want to see. We also have a Slack channel, a public Slack channel that people are always on talking. So that's just uh, slack.textile.io. Uh, and then we have an upcoming community call. We don't have a date yet, but we'll be announcing it on Twitter and on Slack where we want to get this kind of feedback exactly before we finalize. So while we were chatting, there's a new picture that just appeared over there in the feed. That was Ben over there. Nice. That's great. There we are. Yeah. So that's cool. So that came from Ben's phone through the same system where his phone was able to pick it up, his desktop was able to pick it up, all just using the IPFS network. So. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, is there something else that you want to say to people about textile? How can they get onboarded? How can how can they start using the the textile SDK yeah, well, to so start building applications on top of it? What's yeah. the easiest way? Yeah, that's the big thing to point out is that we've really tried to make it uh, one one set of solutions. So we have opinions about how apps could be built. So we're that abstraction layer that makes it really easy to put IPFS. And FS. IPFS into consumer apps, yeah. and we do that cross-platform. So, so this means that users of Textile don't actually need to worry too much about IPFS itself right. and the lower, like the lower APIs of IPFS, because yeah. you abstract that away, giving an opinionated way to build collaborative applications. Yeah, what we what we feel is that you know most applications need the ability to do databases that have feeds, sync data. They need the ways to do encryption and have different levels of security, permissioning, all those things. So we just make that easy. It's out of the box, and then we have. Uh, the cross-platform solution, so it's uh, all the uh, mobile, so it's like uh, native, Android native, uh, iOS, then we have React native, uh, and we have a JavaScript client, and we're working on native web, so yeah, yeah, so we're working hard on that. Uh, and then there's a bunch of really cool things coming up that we just would love more feedback on. Uh, well, one of the pain points that we're seeing for a lot of developers is that they want to speak to a community that's not quite there with us as far as private keys go and having you know full wallets. And what, what our mission is is to get more people to own their data. And it doesn't mean that they necessarily have to buy the full wallet uh, 
solution. And so we're working on how to do curatorial wallets. So having solutions out there that can actually hang on to a wallet for your users and just give them a normal sign in to the system. So sort of like some level of delegation of trust. Totally, exactly, yeah. And anybody can to make UX and onboarding and reduce that's it. to make it easier and reduce friction essentially yep. for a new adopter. Right? Yep, and what's really cool is since our focus is getting that data onto a decentralized network using IPFS, making it so that you can't use APIs as the barriers to your users yeah. ever owning their data again. <laughs> Uh, your users can actually just have that data. They can yeah. export it. It's not really with yeah, us. It's just the key, you know. Exactly. exactly. So yeah, they, they always have like that self agency over the data, exactly. right? Which is what we are all deeply worried and concerned yeah. about in the state of affairs of the world. Yeah, so and definitely uh, growing in that direction together. Yeah, yeah and then the next big piece of what we're really uh, working on is how to handle interoperability. Because the biggest thing here is what you want to have your data for is yeah. so that you can get value from it. Like you can create new things with it. Yeah. And so um, if I'm going to harvest all of my photos and store yeah. them, I want to be able to put them into new applications. And so we're really trying to map out what that interoperability looks like. Exactly. So, yeah, so yeah. new developers can come on and yeah. use Textile and already have access to photos if I give them permission. As long as the user gives them permission yeah. to, to that feed and uh, that information that is stored in. Yeah, the shop in the database. Yep. Yeah. Also, the story there is like, yeah, developers that are sort of thinking of getting into this space yeah. have expertise and sort of what two technologies but want to start exploring this. Should reach out on our Slack channels, should ping us on Twitter, should get in touch because we're really interested in, uh, yeah, just more use cases of facilitating that.